watching KCRA News at 10 in HD on My58. Drivers are coping with high prices and they're now becoming victims of gas thieves and it seems to be getting worse. That is our top story tonight at 10. Good evening. I'm Teo Torres. And I'm Edie Lambert. Gas prices hit yet another record tonight. It's now $3.78 a gallon for regular in Sacramento. Yeah, it's tough. And to make matters worse, that high price is attracting gas thieves now. KCRA3's Richard Sharp joins us live to explain. Richard? Yeah, let me show you what's happening here. We've all heard of people siphoning gas out of your gas tank just like this, but they found a new way to do it. Instead of siphoning it out just out of the gas tank, they're using drills. Here's a great demonstration. We've got this five-gallon jug of water here. If I were to drill into it, you can see just how quick this actually drains. Now, this is five gallons. If this were gas, it would actually be about $20. Now, to give you a feel for how fast this is, it drains in a matter of minutes. But first, take a look at this. The dripping went all the way over there. Uh, a small pile of dirt soaks up the gas that spilled out of Frankie Seamster's minivan. The gas was stolen right out of her car last night. This is pretty aggravating because I'm retired, I'm on a fixed income. It's really aggravating. It's not the only pile of dirt in the parking lot. Other cars were targeted as well. Now, Seamster's minivan is in the shop waiting for hundreds of dollars worth of repairs. Here's a little perspective for you. You can see where the hole is. The hole is the size of a drill bit, no bigger. In fact, in a few seconds with a drill, you can get into the bottom of the gas tank because it's plastic. Then while the tank is draining, whoever drilled the hole can step away from the car and hide. Once it's done, they can come back, grab the portable gas tank, and leave. Oh, with the fuel going up like it is, it's going to get worse. Dana Holland has been in the tow business for 50 years. Lately, he's been towing a lot more cars, trucks, and even fleet vehicles that have gas tanks with holes drilled in them. They're hitting a lot of construction companies, um, private schools, even um, regular schools. They get in there and uh, drain the fuel. Holland's towing company averages three or four vehicles a week. And that's why this victim is speaking out. Well, if we don't make it aware, the public aware of it, of course they're going to come back. And there's a lot of single parents in here, too. So there's a lot of concern over this. And keep in mind, it costs a lot of money. Now, back here live, you can see this thing is almost halfway drained. Uh, so by drilling into the gas tank, they really can get out a lot of gas at a short amount of time. And it's happening more and more. So there's a lot of people concerned about it. Police particularly, they say if this happens to you, call police, file a report. Many people don't file a report, we're told. They say they need to know about the problem, so call, tell police, so they can get out and try and attack the problem. Live in Sacramento, I'm Richard Sharp, KCRA 3 reports. Interesting demonstration, Richard, thank you. Well, Sacramento drivers could get a break at the pump in the form of ethanol fueling stations. The Auburn-based Nella Oil Company plans to open a handful of ethanol stations in Northern California, including two in Sacramento. Now, in order for, to get the 60 cent discount per gallon, you have to have a flex vehicle that can run on both ethanol and regular regular gas. Well, tonight, students and parents say they are worried about racial tensions erupting at their school. Right now, an investigation is underway into a possible hate crime at Rodriguez High School. School officials there say that two students were seen dragging a teddy bear that had a noose around its neck. KCRA3's Damani Lewis joins us live now from Fairfield with more on that story. Damani. Edie and Teo, students I spoke with tonight say they were shocked and appalled at what they saw right outside their school. Tonight, two students are suspended, and now investigators are working to see if what happened out here is a hate crime. I was shocked that it happened at our school. Pulling into the parking lot, I was shocked. Students at Rodriguez High School in Fairfield don't want their faces shown, but want their frustration felt. I shook my head in disgust and was slapping the face. In the same week, millions of people honored Martin Luther King on the 40th anniversary of his assassination. School leaders say two students drove around the school's parking lot carrying a Confederate flag and dragging a life-size teddy bear in a noose over a two-day period. It is 2008, and we are still having to deal with this type of racism. Is this a hate crime? That's what we're, in, that's what we're investigating, frankly. Interim Superintendent Steve Goldstone says school leaders initially only knew about the Confederate flag, but in a school board meeting, it was brought to their attention about the teddy bear wrapped in a noose. Regarding a flag incident, and it was uh, deemed um, the legal counsel and ACLU that is freedom of speech. Um, dragging around a teddy bear with a noose around its neck, I think, far exceeds freedom of speech. 
School leaders say the students have been suspended. They say the incidents were caught on surveillance camera, but they won't release the video because it's part of a bigger investigation. Students say these incidents magnify the racial tension within the school. Every day I walk down the hall, I hear a lot of derogatory comments. Students say since the incident, they started a group called Coalition to help educate students about racism. Enough is enough. At one point, we do have to stop discrimination, and it starts within our schools. Now, tonight, school leaders say they have met with the local chapter of the NAACP. Parents say they will hold another meeting tomorrow along with teachers and students to talk about these issues at the St. Stephen's Church in Fairfield. We're live in Fairfield tonight. Damani Lewis, KCRA 3 reports. And Damani, police say even controversial flags are protected by free speech, but they'll be watching closely for any action that can be considered a hate crime. Now, according to the California Attorney General's website, a reportable hate crime is any criminal act or attempted criminal act to cause physical injury, emotional suffering, or property damage, which is or appears to be motivated by the victim's race, ethnicity, religion, sexual orientation, or physical or mental disability. Well, tonight, Yolo County deputies think they have found the body of a missing UC Davis professor. They are waiting for the results of an autopsy. 72-year-old John Finley Scott has been missing since 2006, but a tip led them to a shallow grave last week near his Davis home. Even without a body, a jury convicted Charles Kevin Cunningham of the murder. The convicted felon worked as a gardener, and police found Finley's stolen checks among his possessions. A guilty conviction for the woman known as the D.C. Madam. A federal jury found Deborah Palfrey guilty of racketeering and money laundering. She ran a high-end prostitution ring from her home in Vallejo that catered to Washington politicians. Throughout the trial, the 52-year-old denied that her escort service engaged in prostitution, but last year she made headlines by offering to sell her phone records to pay for her defense. An incredible story tonight. Bullets fly inside a convenience store, barely missing a customer, and the whole thing was caught on TV. Tape, take a look. It all started when this Wisconsin store clerk fought off a robbery suspect with a bat, scaring him off yesterday. Well, the man may have left empty handed yesterday, but returned loaded. See, he had a gun in his pants there. Uh, when he gets to the counter, there he is. Uh, he draws his weapon, but the man behind the counter had his weapon drawn. Uh, with frustration, the suspect backed out, but fired shots into the store window. Almost caught in the crossfire. The customer in that green jacket right there, nobody was hurt. The suspect did get away. In other news, in a ceremony marking the end of an era, a notorious motel went up in flames purposely in West Sacramento. Before a crowd of invited guests and residents, a West Sacramento mayor lit the fire that burned down the Experience Motel. It's part of the city's urban renewal plan along West Capitol Avenue. City says it has to get rid of urban blight to make way for bigger projects. We expect this property to become a new mixed-use uh, retail housing office complex. Uh, across the street will be a new college, library, and community center. Only half of the hotel was burned down today. The rest will be torched in coming weeks. At the same time, uh, city's fire department will use it to train. Well, we are less than two hours away. you got to be feeling the stress from the tax deadline. Every year some people yeah. do. If you filed your taxes electronically, of course, you can breathe easy tonight. At this point, nearly half of all taxpayers now e-file. Gone are the days of the long midnight lines at the post office. The video you're seeing on the left is from just three years ago. On the right, you're seeing a live picture of the same post office tonight. This is the only one in the Sacramento area that's open tonight. And it looks like a steady stream of cars. They're seeing a lot of people out there at this late hour. Again, you have just under two hours to get down there. So if you need to get in this line, here is the address. West Sacramento's Industrial Post Office is offering midnight window service. And if you live further south, Stockton's Arch Airport Postal Facility will also stay open for the late night filers. Last minute tax filers, that is, had to pass protesters on their way to the mailbox. They claim that paying taxes is not constitutional. They want more citizens to sue the government, although they do admit most of those cases don't work. Supreme Court rulings, which are being thrown out in court. So it definitely looks like that the courts are on the side of the IRS. They passed out pocket-sized copies of the Constitution to drivers. And if you're wondering if Mr. Frost pays his taxes, he says, yeah, they are deducted every paycheck. Well, tax credits for California families and seniors may shrink or be cut altogether next year. Legislative analysts are proposing a big scale back of the dependent tax credit from $294 to $94 per child. It's a, quite a bit of money. I mean, I've got kids getting ready for college and... 
it is huge. I think it's really unfair. I mean, we as parents, we need all the money we can get. As expected, the proposal isn't popular. A $94 credit for seniors and some business incentives may also be going away. Analysts say the state could net almost $3 billion more next year if all the proposed tax breaks are rolled back. More bad news tonight about the mortgage meltdown. Home prices in California continue to fall and foreclosures are up again. State foreclosure rates jumped to more than actually overall foreclosures jumped to more than 65,000 in the month of March alone. That's more than twice the national average and one out of about every 200 households. Data Quick Information Services reports the average home price in Southern California plunged by 24%. SmartMoney.com says this is the time to get a lower rate on your credit card. Credit card interest rates typically fall as the federal funds rate decreases. Right now, those rates have fallen 3% since last fall. Experts recommend if your credit card company refuses to lower your interest rate, you can always remind them they may be losing your business. Tonight, Pope Benedict XVI is in Washington, D.C., getting ready to meet with hundreds of American bishops. It is his first trip to the U.S. The Pope was greeted at Andrews Air Force Base in Maryland by President Bush and the First Lady. The Pope, who turns 81 tomorrow, says he came to America on a mission of faith. He wasted no time addressing the priest pedophile scandals in America. We will absolutely exclude pedophiles from the sacred ministry. I, this is absolutely incompatible. And who is really guilty and uh, to be a pedophile cannot be priest. Sacramento Bishop William Wiegand and incoming Bishop Jamie Soto will be at the meeting with the Pope. Immediately following, Bishop Soto will talk to us live when KCRA 3 reports tomorrow night at 6.30. Tonight, two teenagers are in big trouble, accused of smoking pot with a toddler. Those two teens were caught because they allegedly videotaped the whole thing. Coming up tonight when KCRA 3 reports at 11, how police found this video. Well, can you feel it? We are in for mm. another cool night. But before temperatures dropped, Midtown Sacramento is humming with people tonight. Some out, as you can see, they're on a skateboard. We saw others just kind of hanging out on the streets. We also saw people enjoying a drink. Yeah. Just out there under umbrellas. It's, it's so nice. nice. It's nice when it gets balmy outside. In and the, it's you know, also lighter later. Around. Exactly. Well, uh, we'll find out from Mark Fine and if uh, we'll get any warmer at night, Mark. Well, you know, I do uh, still think that tomorrow morning is going to start out kind of chilly. I'll tell you about and I'll also talk about our warming trend, too, in just a couple of minutes. Walmart wants to stop criminals at the checkout counter next. How the nation's largest gun dealer could limit gun sales. Then Hillary Clinton launches a new media blitz against Barack Obama. Later, the Democratic frontrunner fires back. Plus, a solution for those dirty keyboards. Can you really put it in the dishwasher? We'll explain. That's seven. In tonight's KCRA 3 Health Watch report, there's a new product out with claims to keep germs from collecting on your keyboard. A company called Seal Shield is marketing an antimicrobial keyboard. It's waterproof, submersible, of course, and uses silver ions to keep bacteria away. The company is working on an antibacterial mouse as well. Well, a new brand of candy is catching the attention of law enforcement. It claims to get rid of beer breath. The labeling on the anti-police licorice lozenge reads, no one will know that you've been drinking. But police, of course, worry this candy sends the wrong message to would-be drunk drivers. In a statement, the company writes, it's just looking for a clever way to market its products. In Virginia now, a state trooper quickly must have realized a passing driver was intoxicated. He had to leap out of the way as the driver smashed into his patrol car. In hero dive, it was just a leap out of the way. The leap of faith actually saved his life, but you can see the destruction that was left behind. He walked around to the driver and found him crying and unhurt. As soon as another patrol car showed up, the driver, James Biggers, was arrested with a blood alcohol level twice the legal limit. Well, is it responsible gun vending or Big Brother? You decide. Walmart plans to start limiting weapons sales. Now, the nation's largest gun dealer is creating a system to track and alert the store when a gun it is sold is used in a crime. Now, if the person who bought that gun comes back and tries to buy another one, well, the sales clerk will instantly be alerted. Walmart is going to store its video of purchases and expand background checks on employees who handle firearms as well. So just when you thought spring had sprung everywhere, check out the high country. Yeah, it was amazing. A light coat of white hit the ground early this morning. Is it April or early March? I-80 at Highway 89 you're looking at here. The flurries actually kept Caltrans from starting a major road project at Donner Summit, but uh, 
We're thinking Mark will tell us this is uh, kind of pretty much a fluke. Are we getting a big dumping here, Mark? Or is it oh. spring? <laughs> this, is, uh, this is the way it always is. We yeah. get snow in April, we get snow in May, so don't be surprised if you see video like that again another couple of weeks from now. Yeah, we, uh, we always, of course, see snow at this time of year. The problem is we haven't seen much in the way of precipitation at all anywhere through northern California in the last six weeks. Well, tonight, of course, it's dry and temperatures are running a little bit warmer than last night. It's 50 degrees right now in Sacramento, and actually that's a typo in Stockton. It's 55, not 35. We have 55 degrees in Modesto and 29 degrees in South Lake Tahoe. And yes, the typo was all mine. I did that. I can't type sometimes. And that's a live look at Rayleigh Field, where they played tonight. And they'll play again tomorrow. I think they have a game around noontime tomorrow. Right now, KCRA 3 Live Triple Doppler is quiet. Yeah, we had that uh, little bit of snow early, early this morning, and now everything is quiet. It was quiet all day. It was a relatively cool day for this time of year. Hit 66. The average is in the mid-70s. I think tomorrow we'll get back into the mid-70s, but we're going to start on the cool side. We'll start out in the low 40s, the foothills in the 30s again. But with sunshine, I think we're going to warm up a little bit faster than we did today. By 9 o'clock, mid-50s, by lunchtime, more like mid-60s. Now, today we had some of the north wind. I think we might have some of it again tomorrow. But right now, anyway, the wind is quieted down in Marysville and Sacramento. It's still breezy in Stockton and Modesto. I think all areas will see winds about like this tomorrow, that 13 to 18 mile an hour kind of wind. But otherwise, tomorrow will just be sunny and bright. Here's California. Cloud cover off to the north. A serious cloud cover is off to the east. Nothing in the way of clouds for us tomorrow, another dry day. And Futurecast 3 shows that the overall north flow that brings down the cool air will slowly nudge out to the east during the day tomorrow. So we'll warm up a little bit tomorrow and even more so into the day Thursday. Thursday will most likely go down as the warmest day of this work week. So tomorrow, still on the cool side, especially in the morning. 20 in Truckee, 24 in Tahoe. Back to the 50s in the afternoon. The wind will stay out of the northeast at 10 to 15. We might get as high as the upper 50s to around 60 in Pollock Pines and Arnold. In the foothills, we will start out in the 30s. We will be seeing a rather cool morning. Now, these are the temperatures you'll find around 6, 7 o'clock in the morning. So Placerville, for instance, it'll be chilly in the morning by the afternoon near 70. 71 in Angels Camp, 68 degrees in Grass Valley. Closer to the coast, we'll keep some of that north wind, that offshore wind. That'll keep San Francisco in the low 60s. But inland, mid-70s. That's warmer than what we saw today. And we'll also see a pretty good warming trend tomorrow for the valley. Where we'll start out in the low 40s, highs tomorrow mid to upper 70s, about 74 degrees in Manteca. And for the Sacramento area, we'll also get into the low to mid 70s. So a pretty good looking day. A little breezy, especially in the afternoon, but still lots of sunshine and warmer than what we saw today. The warmest day is Thursday. Sunshine of the high in the upper 70s to near 80. Cooling some on Friday, but look at the weekend. Clouds again. Temperatures in the mid to upper 60s, similar to what we saw today. Beyond that, I think that cooler weather will last into the first part of next week. With that cooler air for the weekend, wouldn't be surprised if you see more snow showers in the Sierra. It happens. It, it's funny, though. Every time it happens in April, we always act surprised that it happened, it happens in April. But That's it our job. So. Yeah, <laughs> you've seen it a time or two. All right, thank you, Mark. Well, a quick reminder tonight, the time is running out to support your favorite business. It's the A-list. It's kcra.com, and everything from restaurants and hair salons to retail shops and art galleries are all counting on your vote. The deadline for the A-list awards is this Friday, April 18th. So log on to kcra.com and vote for your favorite. Well, coming up, Democrats prepare to debate while the Republican challenger for president offers up plans to help you. Next in our Commitment 2008 coverage, why Barack Obama is defending his childhood upbringing. Plus, teachers cry foul at the Capitol. What they're there for coming up next. Wells Fargo Bank. Tomorrow night, Democrats Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton will face off in a big debate. With the Pennsylvania primary now a week away, the attacks are getting even more personal. At a Barack Obama town hall meeting today, an audience member accused Hillary Clinton of being, quote, really close to prejudice, end quote, when she accused Obama of being an elitist. The question drew loud applause, and Obama called the Clinton attacks politics, not racism. He explained that his upbringing in life was hardly elitist true I am amused about this notion uh, of elitist given that you know when you're raised by a single mom when you were on food stamps for a while when you were growing up uh, you went to school on scholarship uh, my wife uh, yeah so you get his point 
Clinton has begun airing a new ad in Pennsylvania that shows voters saying they were insulted by Obama's comment. As Obama and Clinton continue to slug it out, Republican John McCain is sticking to the economy. He called for a summer-long suspension of the federal gas tax. It would save drivers about 18 cents a gallon, although Democrats point out that money goes to the states for road work. He is also proposing a $100 billion cut in spending, which includes a ban on taxes involving the Internet as well as cell phones. The state capitol became a stage for yet another teacher protest. Now, this has just been a horrible time for teachers across California. And, you know, we, we need the support of our, you know, our local senators to help us to make sure that this budget proposal does not pass. So that's why we're here, and we hope that senators are hearing this. Dozens of teachers from San Jose say a potential 10% across-the-board cut for education proposed by Governor Schwarzenegger will hurt students. The state is billions of dollars in the red right now, as you probably know. What is that saying? Spare the rod, spoil the child. Yeah. yeah, well, in the face of protests from some parents, state leaders are moving ahead with an anti-spanking law. The bill would make it illegal to hit children with implements like a switch or a belt, and it has penalties for a wooden spoon, a paddle, or a hairbrush, and even a rolled-up newspaper. That bill passed the Public Safety Committee today. Critics say the bill could send good parents to jail for child abuse for occasionally spanking to correct bad behavior. A deadly reminder that the wildfire season is quickly approaching. Wildfires are burning right now in Colorado, and one has claimed three lives. The largest fire is burning in Ordway. That's about 120 miles southeast of Denver. Two people were killed in that fire, and a firefighting pilot also died when his plane crashed. All of the town's 1,100 residents have been evacuated. So far, 20 buildings have been destroyed. And a second, much smaller fire is also burning near Fort Carson. Yeah, we hope we don't see those scenes around here anywhere close. Well, up next, a chilling account of a former president's murder. We'll have a more on this a very old document you're looking at right here that provides a window into American history. It's been just about 143 years now since President Abraham Lincoln was shot to death in a Washington theater. Now a Colorado man is unearthing a very old letter, actual letter written by a congressman who was there and who witnessed the whole thing. The curtain had just been rolled up for another act. And almost immediately, the audience was startled by the, by the report of a gunfire. Now, what a find. It has been passed down in this guy's family for more than a century. Now he is donating it to the Lincoln Library and Museum in Springfield, Illinois. That's after, he says, he gets it appraised. Probably wise. Antiques Roadshow stuff there. Mm, well, thanks for joining us tonight. We'll see you back here tomorrow. Good night. ACRA. You are looking live at Total Gridlock traffic, backed up for miles from the Golden Gate Bridge, a multi-car pileup, bringing traffic to a standstill far beyond the Bay Area landmark. Then police take a stripper to jail for taking customers on a wild ride involving armed robbery. Okay, demand for gasoline is down, so why are prices still going up? Hi everybody, I'm Dave Walker. And I'm Lois Hart. KCRA 3 reports at 5 and High Definition starts now. You're watching KCRA 3 HD, where the news comes first. Now, KCRA 3 reports at 5 in high definition. We begin with breaking news out of San Francisco. Gridlock, a multi-car pileup on the Golden Gate Bridge just before the evening commute. That brought traffic to a halt there, and it's just getting longer and longer. KCR Ray 3's Edie Lambert live in the newsroom with the latest there. Edie. Dave and Lois, as you know, traffic is always pretty bad around San Francisco this time of day, but even by those standards, this is considered severe. As many as seven vehicles involved in the crash, and for hours, the traffic in and out of the northern end of San Francisco has been at an absolute standstill. Let's take you there live. Uh, because this is a live picture, we're going to see here what they're showing us. Okay, they're just looking, it looks like like at the northern end of San Francisco, adjusting their shot in uh, what appears to be perhaps the marina area. And you can see the gridlock there. If this is the marina, that would be people just getting on the bridge. No, this is Sausalito, I am told. 
and uh, those are people going through a tunnel getting into the bridge. We've now switched to a tape because this is just a cleaner picture for you and you can see the crash. Again, as many as seven vehicles involved. Uh, nine people injured, two of them suffered critical injuries, and as you can see at that point, all but one lane shut down and the gridlock just extended for miles in both directions. In fact, traffic backed all the way to Sausalito. Now we can tell you that all lanes of the bridge reopened about 40 minutes ago, but again, Dave and Lois, a lot of people, thousands of people getting home much later than they expected to tonight. Back to you. That can be quite the bottleneck and we're yeah. just getting word to Edie. Thank you very much that uh, the uh, southbound lanes of uh, 101 are backed up more than five miles. So they're still trying to clear out that mess. In other news, a happy ending for a cliffhanger in the case of a missing El Dorado County girl found safe. A word community wants to know what happened after a missing girl. Well, she was missing more than a week. 17-year-old Casey Klinner is back safe with her family now. But as the community now breathes a sigh of relief, the FBI is now involved and some questions remain. KCRA 3's Mike DeSalle is live in El Dorado Hills tonight with more on this case. So, uh, Mike, where was she located? Well, David Lois, you know, that's all part of the mystery of all of this developing uh, story. It was the Sacramento Police Department. <coughs> Excuse me about that. It was the Sacramento Police Department who recovered this El Dorado Hills girl in the Bay Area while working as part of the FBI's Safe Streets Coalition. However, beyond that, there are few clues and few details about what exactly happened over the last week. In fact, even now, 16 hours after her recovery, it is still unclear whether she ran away, whether she was kidnapped, or whether she was even ever held against her will. News that Vicki Zito's daughter was found safe and alive today has parents in El Dorado Hills feeling a sense of relief. But at the same time, the week-long disappearance of 17-year-old developmentally disabled Casey Clinton also has those same parents wanting answers. Oh, huge. I think everyone wants to know why. It's intriguing, like I want to know more. And yeah, I think anybody would want to know, you and, know, and, and find out what the true story is. Remember, Casey Clinton went missing last Tuesday. Given her past history of running away, El Dorado County Sheriff's Detective suspected the disabled girl was again a runaway. But early this morning, Sacramento Police found the girl in the Bay Area, and KCRA 3 confirmed the FBI was now involved. Problem is, at this hour, no one is releasing any information about why an investigation is ongoing. The girl's mother telling KCRA 3 on the phone only, quote, you can bet your bottom dollar she was not a runaway. Adding to this mystery are those reports, at least three of them in recent weeks, of a suspicious person in a dark SUV approaching people in El Dorado Hills. Makes you wonder, is this connected to that? Now again, at this hour, the FBI is only saying that there are, quote, loose ends that need to be answered. Beyond that, no one, no agency is offering any answers to ease parents' concerns that their own children in this area could still be at risk. Gee, is there someone out there yeah. trying to get these kids or I don't know makes as a parent it makes you very wary and makes you want to know more about what happened yeah. and what's going on and still kind of a bit of a mystery yes <laughs> a bit of a mystery and you know I try adding another layer to this mystery is the fact that I tried contacting the El Dorado County Sheriff's Department to ask whether or not parents really do need to have any concern for the safety of their own children in light of these new developments whatever those new developments are well five pages and two phone messages later and still no call back from anyone at the El Dorado Sheriff's Department. Dave Lowe's. And Mike, what else can you tell us about your conversations with the mother in this case? Uh, you know, this morning she said that she was overjoyed, expressed relief that her daughter was home and that yes, she was seeking some medical attention for her daughter to make sure she was indeed okay. But beyond that, she said she simply doesn't want to elaborate on what she's found out because she doesn't want to jeopardize this ongoing investigation. Live in El Dorado Hills, I'm Mike DeSell. Lois. Okay, Mike. The fatal drunk driving trial of a prominent Sacramento man, Roberto Valenueth, begins in just under a month. Today marked the one-year anniversary of the fatal accident he is charged with causing. This is video from the accident scene. Family and friends gathered in Southland Park to remember the four people who lost their lives in that suspected drunk driving accident. You would never think this would happen to you in a million years. But it does, and it did. We will no longer hear them laugh, see their beautiful smiles, or even feel their touch. Philana with a charge with four counts of gross vehicular manslaughter. His trial is set to begin April 24th. 
Police are saying that a Lodi stripper went too far to earn an extra buck and is now facing kidnapping and robbery charges. 23-year-old Nicole Blank has pleaded not guilty to those charges. Police are saying 40-year-old man hired her for a private show. He got into a car with her, which suddenly pulled over, and then two men showed up and robbed him at gunpoint. He managed to escape and then called the police. And now they think that other victims may be out there. Blank will be in court on April the 3rd. Well, it's official. One of the stars of the Sacramento Kings during their run at the NBA championship is retiring. The glory.